performing process validation on manufacturing processes for medical devices isn't just a regulatory checkbox. It's essential for ensuring patient safety. In this video, I'll break down the key regulation standards and guidelines you need to understand from both the US and the EU perspective. Whether you're new to the field or you're looking to sharpen your compliance game, this is the place to start. I am Helena Yelmefjord, and you're watching a video that is part of my course on process validation for medical devices. If you'd like to register for it, follow the link in the video description, and it will take you to the Medical Device HQ website. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click that red button, and don't forget to turn on the notifications. Now, let's get started. I will now guide you through the regulations and standards and guidelines related to process validation. The aim is for you to understand the regulatory framework and requirements regarding process validation. We will focus on the regulations in the EU and the US, and I will use terminology and concepts that apply to these medical device markets. You will, however, find that these concepts work well for most markets in the world as well. For medical devices sold to the US market, process validation is required by a regulation known as 21 CFR Part 820, Quality System Regulation, often referred to as the QSR. Section 820.75 of the QSR tells us when we must perform process validation, which is when a process cannot be fully verified by subsequent inspection and testing. It also requires that manufacturers establish and maintain procedures for monitoring and controlling process parameters for validated processes, and that the personnel involved in the manufacturing process that have been validated are qualified for the work that they do. It also is required that we review and evaluate changes or deviations to processes and perform revalidation if required. And of course, it requires us to document what we have done. As an FDA inspector once told me, if you didn't document it, you didn't do it. With that said, there is an ongoing change regarding regulations in the US market. At the beginning of 2024, the FDA issued the Quality Management System Regulation Final Rule. The new Quality Management System Regulation, abbreviated QMSR, is set to replace the current QSR in the United States. The new rule aims to align the FDA regulations with the ISO 13485-2016 Quality Management for Medical Device Standard, making it easier for medical device manufacturers to comply with the regulatory requirements in different markets. The QMSR emphasizes the need to establish and implement process validation procedures to ensure that the manufacturing process consistently produces products that meet predetermined requirements. The QMSR will be part of 21 CFR Part 820. Therefore, moving forward, I will refer to the US regulations as 21 CFR Part 820. Now, let's turn to the EU. When placing a medical device on the EU market, one of two regulations will apply. The medical device regulation, abbreviated MDR, covers regular medical devices, and the in vitro diagnostic medical device regulation, called the IVDR, applies to in vitro medical devices. The MDR and the IVDR require manufacturers to comply with the safety, performance, and quality standards. Validating manufacturing processes is one way to fulfill safety and performance standards, as it ensures that these processes consistently meet stringent requirements. Now, Annex 1 in both the MDR and the IVDR compromise several pages of requirements that are mandatory to fulfill if the requirement is applicable to the medical device in question. These requirements are called General Safety and Performance Requirements, and this is often referred to as GSPR. Requirements related to manufacturing of medical devices are covered in several of the GSPRs. I will not mention all of them here, but I would like to draw your attention to a few key points. The GSPR first requirement states, devices shall achieve the performance intended by the manufacturer and shall be designed and manufactured in such a way that during normal conditions of use, they are suitable for the intended purpose. 
Manufacturing of devices is mentioned already in the very first requirement, as manufacturing is an important factor ensuring the safety of the device. GSPR.4 discusses risk control measures and includes the requirement that manufacturers shall eliminate or reduce risks as far as possible through safe design and manufacture. Process validation now is one way, and sometimes even the only way, to ensure that risk control measures are effective. MDR Annex 2.3b states that manufacturers shall have a complete information on manufacturing processes and their validation. In IVDR Annex 2.6.5a points out that the process validation needs to be performed for devices that are placed on the market in sterile or defined microbial conditions. So 21 CFR Part 820, the MDR and the IVDR are regulations that medical device manufacturers selling medical devices to the US and the EU markets must comply with. These regulations cover all medical devices and span over the entire life cycle of the medical device. In addition to these regulations, there are two standards that are particularly important to be aware of when it comes to process validation. And they are ISO 13485 on quality managed systems for medical devices and ISO 14971 on the application of risk management for medical devices. The vast majority of medical device manufacturers use ISO 13485 and have implemented a quality management system that, that fulfills the ISO 13485 requirements. ISO 13485 in turn refers to ISO 14971 on risk management. Both of these standards are essential in the medical device industry in general, but also useful in a context for process validation. ISO 13485 in section 7.5.6 titled Validation Processes for Production and Service Provisions outlines several requirements to related to when to perform process validation. ISO 4971 is a standard that provides requirements for the application of risk management on medical devices. Now, while ISO 4971 does not specifically address process validation for manufacturing processes, it emphasizes the importance of risk management throughout the entire product lifecycle, including manufacturing processes, and process validation is sometimes used to verify the effectiveness of some risk controls, for example, the sterilization of medical devices. Additionally, the GHTF guidance, which I will present shortly, notes that the effort in process validation should be in proportion to the associated risk. Therefore, it is beneficial to have a basic understanding of risk management as outlined in ISO 4971 when working with process validation. These regulations and standards tell us that we have to perform process validation, but they don't really provide so much information on how to do it. Now, fortunately, there is a useful guidance document available on how to perform process validation. And this is the GHTF SG3 N99-10 2004 Quality Management System Process Validation Guidance. I will refer to this as the GHTF guidance. Now, this course is well aligned with the guidance document. GHTF stands for Global Harmonization Task Force. The GHTF was an international group consisting of regulatory authorities and industry representatives, and one of the aims was to put together guidance documents related to medical devices. Now, in 2011, the GHTF group was replaced by the International Medical Device Regulators Forum, abbreviated IMDRF. However, the 2004 GHTF guidance document on process validation still remains applicable. We have now reviewed the regulations, some standards, and a guidance document. And it is the guidance document that we will turn to to get the definition on the term process validation. The GHTF states that process validation is establishing by objective evidence that a process consistently produces a result or a product meeting its predetermined requirements. It's a systematic series of tests and evaluations that verify whether a process can reliably produce a product that meets its predetermined criteria. 
under normal conditions. Another document that I want to mention is the ISA-TR 8002-2017 Medical Device Software Part 2, Validation of Software for Medical Device Quality System. This is a technical report that applies to the validation of software used in quality management systems, such as software for complaint handling and non-conformity management. It is also applicable to software used in production and service provisions. This could be a software used in a sterilizer to sterilize medical devices, or software used for monitoring and measuring requirements, for example, a vision control system. We have concluded when it comes to software used in a quality management system, in production and service provisions, and in monitoring and measuring requirements, IEC TR 8002-2 applies. However, be cautious, because sometimes people use the term software validation when referring to verification and validation of software that is embedded in the medical device or that the software is the medical device itself. In that case, other standards apply, such as IEC 62304 and IEC 82304-1. The point here is to be cautious with the term software validation, as it can refer to either of these two options. Unless it is obvious, make it a habit of always asking people who refer to software validation if they mean the software used in the quality management system, software that is part of the medical device, or a medical device that is software in itself. Now, courses on these standards are available on medicaldevicehq.com. There is one additional document that I would like to mention, and that is a guidance document issued by the FDA in 2011. The scope of this guidance is process validation specifically intended for manufacturing of human and animal drugs and biological products. It is important to note that the scope of the guidance does not include process validation related to medical devices. In this guideline, process validation is defined as the collection and evaluation of data from the process design stage through commercial production, which establishes scientific evidence that a process is capable of consistently delivering quality products. Process validation involves a series of activities taking place over the life cycle of the product and the process. The phase that involves answering, can the manufacturing process consistently produce products that meet our requirements, is referred to as process qualification, not process validation as in the GHTF guideline. Sometimes you may hear people in the medical device industry use terminology from this guideline, even though it is not strictly speaking applicable to the medical device industry. So if you don't recognize language used in the relation to process validation, it may be coming from this guidance document. That was a lot of information and abbreviations in a short time. Now this course will be based on the requirements outlined in the regulations, standards, and the guidance provided in the GHTF document, as well as, when applicable, ICTR 8002-2 technical report. So, did you learn something new and interesting? Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts. And if you want to connect with us, we're on LinkedIn too. Just find us at Medical Device HQ. That's all for now. Make sure to come back and thanks for watching.